All right, everybody, get your Bibles out, get ready. Would you wave to someone, maybe greet someone online? We have sermon notes on the YouVersion Bible app. Look for Summit Church of Castle Rock and events in your area. Our zip code here, if you use use YouVersion, go to events, then click on 80109, which is the zip code of the church. And we're going to get into today's teaching, which I have called We Win. We Win. So I'm going to, I'm going to give Lily a little break and not put her on camera, but you, she can, you can, uh, actually, if you'll run the notes though, I just need to, I need, just need someone to run the notes. You guys doing all right? Give me a comment. Give me a hello. Give me a something. If you, uh, if you have a special prayer request, that would be awesome. Good. Nice. Thank you for the thumbs up. I appreciate that. Um, if you have prayer requests, make sure and put it in the comment section below. If you have needs, especially if you have uh, physical needs, if you have needs for bread, if you have need for medical help or attention or a visit, let us know that. Private message me if you want to keep it private. We will come, especially if you live here in the central uh, Colorado area, South Denver metro area, anywhere in the Castle Rock area. We want to help meet your emotional, physical, and if we can, financial needs. And we believe God is going to bless you. He's going to help you. He's going to, he's going to do for you what you can't do for yourself. But turn in your Bible with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. And we win, everybody. We win. I've read the end of the book, and we don't lose. <laughs> and so I've been in a series this year called Tag 2020. Tag stands for Take and Give 2020. And here's the synopsis of what I, I feel like the Holy Spirit told me to teach about throughout this year for Tag 2020. Here's, here's the synopsis. In unprecedented times when people are either all take, 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 or all give, 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 everyone today needs to learn the fine art of giving and receiving. All of God's creation is based on healthy forms of planting and harvest, sowing and reaping, early rains and latter rains. If we can learn to function in God's creation with a healthy biblical mindset of growth, frugality, faithfulness, stewardship, and doing the right work at the right times for the right reasons, then we can enjoy the most effective and fruitful life that God has planned for us for the rest of our lives, no matter how long or brief our lives might be. After after all, we are promised eternal life once we've received Christ. So God can make your life make a difference. And so turn in your Bible with me to that passage today, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I think just about every Christian worldwide, not just in our country, but worldwide has thought, oh man, is this it? Like global plague, a global disease that could kill everybody and there's no vaccine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fear can creep up on us. Anxiety can creep up on us. Guess what? We don't have to live like other people. We have a hope in Christ. We have a comfort that others don't have. And we know that, yes, the end times are coming. Everything that the Bible says is true. And things will go from bad to worse. But don't worry. God wins in the end. We win in the end right? And even if some of us are martyred for our faith, or if we face difficulties, we have a hope forever in heaven. We have a hope even here on this earth uh, to walk with God in intimacy and in peace. So here's my objective of the talk here today. Everyone should find comfort in God because of three clear comforts and a literal catching away of the church from the words of Jesus in various New Testament passages. So I'm going to take you through several teachings of the, of the New Testament about the end times about revelation about the comfort the comforting words of Christ and how will we know that this is it or it's not it or you know is this the last days or oh I'm gonna die from this right, now listen we, we are not slaves to fear we're friends of God we have hope so just put all those things to rest right now and so the key text that I'm going to demonstrate sort of this literal catching away the church and there's a promise even during plagues and difficulty, God has good things that he wants us to learn. We've had some scares this week, right? Obviously, it's been a scary week. It's scary that every church in America is online right now. Um, and I think about even this global pandemic called COVID-19, the outbreak. We've had a 6.2 magnitude earthquake in Indonesia, a 5.7 magnitude earthquake in Utah. Strangely enough, the trumpet in the angel's hands on top of the temple in Utah got knocked out of his hand. I don't know what that means, but it's surely probably some kind of prophetic sign. 
And some people think it harkens to an Old Testament passage. I'm not so sure about all that. But maybe Jesus is saying the trumpet's blast, the trump is about to blast. I'm not sure what, what the trumpet being knocked out of the angel's hand could possibly mean for us. But we've had some strange things happening. You talk about, yes, global pandemic, uh, earthquakes, um, signs and wonders, miracles. There's, there were, uh, in northern Colorado, there was a pack of wolves that were aggressively attacking people and, and cows. There was a park ranger n- uh, south in Colorado that was attacked right in front of a whole bunch of people. You know, like animals were kind of going nuts. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And this, that's written about in the Bible too. And you're like, man, there's all kinds of signs that are manifesting around us. Like, the Bible talks talks about this. The Bible talks about that. The Bible talks about that too. Hey, (laughs) just because the Bible talks about it doesn't mean we need to be afraid. We need to find comfort in the fact that the Bible talks about it because that that comfort, that warning is to show us how we're supposed to believe, how we're supposed to behave. Good morning, Connie. Good to see you. Anybody else just saying hello? I'm glad that you're online and watching today. God bless you. If you have needs, if you have prayer needs, put it in the comment section or private message me. Glad you're joining me. So here's the deal. If you're a little freaked out this week by all the things happening, guess what you're called? You're called human. We're all a little freaked out. We're all a little scared. We're all a little uh, taken aback by all the things that have happened. I think even our president and our leaders and everyone in the whole country is thinking, wow, I did not see this coming. Well, you know, and then we're looking for someone to blame. Well, it's hard to blame, you know, a virus. How do you blame a disease? You know, how do you how do you go to war against a disease? Well, we're doing our best with uh, making masks and doing testing and all those things, but in the end, we have to trust the Lord. And so that's really what this whole message is about. We, the other thing that's difficult about this for us is we don't know the time limit. Like, is this going to last for, I know that we've had 15 days to slow the spread. That's what the the president's initiative right now is. So if you're sick, don't go out in public. If you have a fever and if you think you might have COVID-19, go get tested. Um, But they're like, so for nine days, we're shutting everything down. You're not technically quarantined. You still have the freedom of movement. But, you know, things, you know, things, this is how we're trying to slow the spread of the disease right now. And it's on nine days of sort of kind of wait and see, see what happens. And then they're talking about eight weeks beyond that, that this could continue for another eight weeks. And then some people are saying, well, it could be before July or August before they lift the restrictions. Or if the the disease gets worse, then we might not have a cure for the vaccine in 15 to 18 months. We're like, so what's the timeline? What are we looking at? Like, how will we know when it's over? (laughs) And I think everyone has feel that way. Guess what? None of us know ever how much time we have in life. So just get over the idea of the fact that you can control everything. You're not God and neither am I. And so we just have to release all those things to the Lord and say, okay, God, I can't control that. That's something that's out of my control. What can I control? I can control a grateful heart, a grateful spirit, a peace-filled mind. I can choose what to fix my eyes on. I can choose to dwell on scripture. I can choose to go for a walk. I can choose, yes, wash my hands. Yes, take care of my body. Yes, eat right, exercise, get some sleep, stay hydrated, all the things that we know to do. But even on top of all that, the spiritual program, pray, meditate, uh, you know, make amends with people if you've hurt someone. You know, say you're sorry. Be careful not to create new resentments, right? Live in, in a spiritually healthy way. And I, as a pastor of, our, of a local church, I've thought about how does our church respond to all of this? The church worldwide has been praying about how do we respond? And of course, most of our ministries have moved online to online platforms of some some kind. Our church has doubled the efforts with a bread ministry. Uh, for the last couple years, we've been collecting Panera bread and then distributing to hungry families. And whatever bread's left over, we give to the Douglas and Elbert County Task Force here in town. Um, but we've doubled up our pickups at Panera trying to just get bread into the... Because there are people who are food insecure. They just lost their job. The outlets have been closed now. You know, so there's a lot of people who are out of work and like, I don't know if I'm going to pay for groceries. I got to decide, do I buy medicine or do I buy groceries? Like, do I feed my kids? or what? So, I mean, you think about the food banks. People are going to the food banks because they're not sure how they're going to pay for everything. Guess what? God is able to make all grace abound to you. 
right? He, God, my God is able to supply all of my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. My God's arm is not short that he can't reach me. And he can reach you too. He can provide for everything you need. Give me an amen. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a, yeah, go Pastor Wade. Give me some kind of encouragement to keep me going in this sermon, everybody. Can I get, can I get a little love? Somebody, please. All right. So thank you, Jeremiah. I see, I see that hand. I see that hand. Yes and amen. So God, God is able to provide for us. And there have been br- some bright spots in this um, first few days of the sermon. I mean, of, that's not the sermon, of the, of the outbreak. And um, there's this viral poem that's gone out that I've seen and many people have posted and reposted. If you haven't heard it yet, I want to read it to you. It's a poem that's called, And the People Stayed Home by a little known lady named Kitty O'Mara. And it, it's kind of like looking for the bright spot in what might God be doing spiritually for all of us. And one, one friend of mine said, it's funny that God sent us all to our rooms. It's like we, he canceled sports. He canceled all our favorite things. You can't do, go to the restaurants. You can't do all these things. He, and he sent us to our rooms, right? <laughs> but I think we're spending more time with family. We're spending more time with our spouses. We're spending more time with our kids. We're thinking about our health. We're washing our hands. Washing our hands. Like we should have been washing our hands the whole time. Why we're we not washing our hands, right? So <laughs> anyway, this poem, I'll read it to you. It says this. And the people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played games and learned new ways of being and were still and listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced, some met their shadows. And the people began to think differently. And the people healed. And in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous, mindless, and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. And when the danger passed, the people joined together again. They grieved their losses and made new choices and dreamed new images and created new ways to live and heal the earth fully as they had been healed. Kitty O'Mara. She's been dubbed the the poet laureate of the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, today's text gives us not just hope that, hey, maybe something good can can come out of the pandemic, but the Bible says that we can comfort each other with the words that are written in the Bible. And so let's get into our text here today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 13 through 18. It's a section titled in my Bible, The Hope of the Resurrection. And it says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God. First the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. You know, there's a pastor years ago named Dr. Robert Schuler of the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California. And he made this statement. He said, tough times don't last, but tough people do. I'm going to say that again. You should write that down. Maybe one of you probably should get the tattoo. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Yeah, it's true. This There'll be an end to the pandemic. There'll be an end to financial difficulty. That like like that little orphan Annie says, and Annie, the sun will come out tomorrow. Tomorrow's only a day away, right? Well, that's that's a, a feel good feeling from a Broadway musical, but there's a truth behind it. That every cloud does have a silver line. That if, if you find yourself walking through the valley of the shadow of death, keep walking. Don't camp out there. <laughs> keep going because there's hope on the other side. So I'm going to answer three major questions that people ask during fearful times. 
We all feel fearful. We all go through difficulty. Maybe some of the big questions that you're asking are one of these three that I'm going to mention here today. Here's the, here's the first big question. What am I supposed to do? Like, like, I'm done. I'm like, I can't go to work. I'm stuck at home. I, I don't know how to make any money. Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. How many of you found yourself asking that? Uh, what, do, what do I do? What do I do? Right? Well, here's the first, here's, here's a list of things not to do. First of all, okay? First of all, number one, stop trying to fix these problems yourself. For example, stockpiling toilet paper, right? Minimizing or ignoring real world problems. That, that you, you cannot control all those things. You can't um, control what other people do. And you can't, um, like I'm gonna write a letter to my, a firmly written letter to my senator and he's gonna do something about it. Hmm, well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe that'll just get you spun up even more. Number two, don't panic. Don't panic. Turn off the news once you know the basic information. Don't spend hours and hours and hours listening to the news. That might be a good thing to do. Number three, stop blaming and trusting in failed systems. See, a lot of people have built these systems and they're trusting in their money or they're tr trusting in cryptocurrency or they're trusting in their 401k or they're trusting in the stock choices they've made. They're trusting in their stockpile of gold or they're a prepper and they're trusting in how much uh, clean water they've stored. L listen, you can't control most of these things that are happening. And the truth is, there's only one who can, and he's the one who's in, in control of it all. So if we can love and trust God and believe that he has the best th uh, plans for us, then, then we know he's going to take us to better places. So stop blaming and trusting in failed systems. Number four, and this is for those of my friends who are in recovery, whether it's alcohol, drugs, uh, porn, any, any number of life-controlling addictions, even, even social media can be an addiction, right? You can be addicted to cleaning. You can be addicted to a lot of things. But addiction is just another form of control where you're trying to control your feelings, you're trying to control your emotions, you're trying to control um, things that really are, you're not supposed to try to control. So number four, stop numbing out. Stop numbing out or trying to escape reality. Stop trying to create your own uh, personally defined world that you can feel safe in because that's not a real place that you're trying to live in. Living in a place where you're drunk or high all the time, or living in a place where you're trying to get the endorphins pumping all the time, or, or, or if you're an adrenaline junkie, you know, you're like, I'm just trying to get a thrill, and if I get that feeling of a thrill, then I know I'm alive. No, 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 hey, you're trying to manipulate too much. Just, just relax. Take it easy, like we like to say. All right? Number five, and this is an important one, especially right now, don't exploit people or situations to your own advantage during this time. There are people who are vulnerable. And to take advantage of someone during their times of vulnerability, I think God would, would look down on that. He would not smile on that. I think when we take care of the orphan and the stranger, Jesus said, "In as much as you've done it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you've done it unto me. So we have to be careful how we treat people. We have to be kind. We have to be gracious. We have to be loving. We have to be peace-filled. And we, we cannot be greedy. Even though we might see opportunity to make money in this storm. Hey, Paul, good to see you this morning. We have to say, okay, you know what? I, I'm going to release. If God's given me extra, I'm going to pour out the extra that I have. If I have a need, I'm not going to be too proud to, to mention, hey, I have a need. It's okay. It's okay. We all go through need. And we all have extra sometimes. But that's what... Tag 2020 is all about take and give, learning that fine art of giving and receiving, never closing your hands. God can always give to an open hand, but he can't give to a closed one. And if God says pour out, then you can pour out and trust him that he's going to put more in. That's huge. And a lot of people have not grasped the laws of sowing and reaping. They haven't truly understood what healthy giving and receiving is all about. And at a time like this, Times like this will teach you that the laws of sowing and reaping are real. Eastern mysticism and philosophy, New Age, calls it karma. That's cute, but it's not true. Because it's based on human effort. And laws of sowing and reaping are based on supernatural laws in the kingdom of God. So sowing and reaping is really, really important. And that you put those things into practice. That you tithe. That you give over and above. You take care of the poor. You do the things that you can do. The things that you can't do, God's not asking you to give what you don't have. But if you have a need, speak up. 
so that others can meet your needs, so that no one goes hungry, no one goes without, everyone has what they need. And so we have to release the whole situation to God. So much of this is out of our control. I mean, what in the world can you do about the vi- a virus? <laughs> it reminds me of this little thing we used to say as kids. Are you afraid of a man this big? And then you would, then you'd put it in the guy's face. Are you afraid of a man this big? Well, you blinked, right? This virus is smaller than a man this big, and yet this virus could kill you. Are you afraid of a man this big? <laughs> you blinked. <laughs> Don't blink. God's God's bigger than the coronavirus. In fact, you're bigger than the coronavirus. When you really think about it, Christ in you, the hope of glory, makes you greater than the coronavirus. So you can trust that God is going to keep you in his care during this time. And even if you do get sick, he's able to make you well. And so the serenity prayers is a prayer that I really love to pray. And maybe when you hear about Jesus and the gospel and the Bible, you're like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe someone sent you and shared this message. And you're like, I, I'm not sure about the whole Christianity thing. But, you know, <laughs> this is out of my control. My emotions are just through the roof. Listen, this is a prayer that a lot of us pray. And it can really help you. Just pray this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference between those two. See, if I can release to God the things which are God's and take up the responsibilities that are supposed to be mine, and if, I, if God can help me discern the difference between those two, I can, I can live with serenity. I can live with peace. I can, I can trust that no matter what happens, even if the bottom drops out, I'm going to be okay. And so are you. So that's, that's a big question. Number one, what am I supposed to do? Question number two, what is all, what is, what all this is going on? Like, why, what's going on? <laughs> like, I was like, what's happening now? What's happening now? We're on the news all the time. What's happening now? I don't even look at the coronavirus map and in the United States and the COVID map. It was like, oh, how many people have it now? How many people have died? Oh, no. You're like, oh, what am I doing? Like, we've already covered what am I supposed to do. But a lot of us are going, what's going on? Why is this happening? I have a friend uh, from college who's actually a musician. He was in the, in the same band that I was in a year later. Uh, his name is Wayne Thomas. Shout out to Wayne Thomas. He, he posted this picture. He was in an empty restaurant. Look at this, Lily. He was in an empty restaurant, and he, he posted the question, Did I miss something? <laughs> Look, eating, eating pizza in a totally empty restaurant. He's actually a producer uh, and a musician for the, I think, the Watoto Children's Choir in Africa. Wonderful guy. You know, you got to be able to keep a sense of humor in times like this. Keep a sense of humor. Because you know what? Sometimes a sense of humor is all you've got. So let's just realize there's going to be an end to this. We don't have to be fearful. We, we, fearful. we can trust God. So. What is all of this? What is this? Well, first of all, and I have a list, it's not a movie. This is not a movie starring you, okay? This is a, this is a global experience. You're not going through this alone. Um, this is not The Walking Dead. Now, everyone's expecting the zombie apocalypse. Guess what? There's nothing in the Bible about zombies. I know they talk about the dead in Christ will rise. That has nothing to do with zombies. The dead in Christ will rise um, to meet Christ in the air, and the dead that are unredeemed are going to be uh, will rise at the end, at the last day, for judgment. But they're not going to be dead people walking around the earth. So this, so get zombies out of your head. This is not The Walking Dead. Okay, we can calm calm down on that one. This is not 1984. The, you know, the whole, uh, I think it's George Orwell who wrote this science fiction book about Big Brother is watching and the government is trying to take over. And I've heard conspiracies from libertarians and conspiracies from Republicans and conspiracies from my Democrat friends. They all have their own conspiracies. Like, oh, the government, this is how they're going to do it. They're going to take over. No, listen, stop, 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 stop. This ain't 1984, all right? And this, just just stop playing out the scenarios in your head of every science fiction book you've ever read. Read because this is not science fiction. Um, I, I posted I posted a joke earlier today. I thought it was funny. Um, I said, "Please, no one give a monkey a machine gun this week, because this is exactly how Planet of the Apes starts." 
Okay, that was a joke, everybody, just in case you didn't know, because monkeys should never have machine guns ever, but uh, I'm not afraid that any of you are going to give a machine gun to a monkey, probably, first of all, because you don't have a monkey, and <laughs> most of you don't have machine guns, except a few of you, I know you do, but you are not going to give a monkey a machine gun, and we don't have to worry about Planet of the Apes coming to, to pass, so this is not science fiction, it's not even regular fiction, this is real Life. This is this is truly happening. Okay, it's really happening, everybody. So we really need to do something about it. We really need to help people. We really need to get our mind in a peaceful, filled place. We really need to stay sober. We really need to read our Bible. We really need to pray. We really need to be kind to our spouses and our children. We really need to take care of ourselves. We really need to wash our hands. We really need to do all these things. This is not a movie. Not at 1984. It's not a science fiction. This is real life. So, and we serve a real God. It's not. It's not a fable. It's not a fantasy. It's not. It's not just some pretend thing. Obviously, because it's coming to pass before our very eyes. So we really need to, to serve God and to follow Jesus. I believe. So many people have mocked the idea of this whole idea of a catching away. One of the next big things that we could look for on the biblical clock in, in world history for us as believers is a literal rapture or a catching away of the church. A lot of people are thinking, man, is, is Jesus coming back? Yeah, Jesus is coming back. When is he coming back? I don't know. He said very soon. Well, it's been a while. It's been a minute. <laughs> and I think soon is probably pretty soon. It's getting sooner every day. Jesus could come at any moment. And a lot of people have mocked the church going, where is this coming that you talk about? Jesus isn't coming back. That's silly. That's stupid. They even said that the Christians in Jesus' day. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3-6, through 6, they address this issue. He says, Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. And they will say, Where is this coming that he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of the water and by water. And by these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. The game clock of history is ticking down. The catching away of the church is sooner now than it's ever been. It could come in any moment. You need to be ready at any moment to say, okay, Jesus, I'm ready. I'm ready for your return. I'm looking forward to your return. I'm looking forward to the day I'm going to see you face to face. Until then, we got a job to do. we got to be his loving hands extended to people who are hurting in this world. And a lot of people have pushed, you know, tisk tisk this idea of a literal rapture of the church. Oh, maybe that's metaphorical language. There's only one scripture. No, there's actually about 10 scriptures that reference a literal return. And I'm going to read just three of what I think are pretty powerful scriptures that, that really show us that the rapture is not a metaphor, but it's an actual event. Matthew 24, verses 30 through 31. And this is Jesus talking. He says, Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven and with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call. And they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. Luke 17, verses 30 through 35. And Jesus again talking. He says, It will be just like this on the day that the Son of God is revealed, or the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is on the housetop with possessions inside should go down and get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. And I'll talk about that here in a second. I highlighted it. Whoever tries to keep their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life will preserve it. I tell you that one night, two people will be in one bed, one will be taken, and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together, one will be taken, and the other left. Jesus is speaking about a literal catching away of God's people in the last days. And he says, remember Lot's wife. Well, who is Lot's wife? If you don't know much about the Bible or the Old Testament, Lot and his wife were in this city called Sodom and Gomorrah. And God was going to bring his judgment down on the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said, when you leave the city, don't look back. 
and the angels took them by the hands and literally dragged them out of Sodom and, and took them out of the city. But, but Lot's wife looked back and the Bible says she turned into a pillar of salt. That she pined for Sodom. She pined for her old life. She pined for the good old days. Oh, I wish I could have my old life back. Jesus is saying, you're going to leave this world and you're not going to look back. Don't long for the way things used to be. Don't long for the old sinful pleasures of this world, but long for a new kingdom. Long for a city whose builder and maker is God, like Abraham did. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53, another passage about the literal catching away of the church, that God is going to snatch Christians and believers off of this planet. He says this, Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In the flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. The rapture of the church is coming, and it's coming soon. There will be a time when people wake up to the news and they'll say a couple billion people have disappeared off the planet. Where do they go? Uh, they'll, they'll look for high-speed camera footage and maybe they'll see people being zapped out of their bags. There'll be, there'll be graves that burst open and the remains will disappear. There'll be children below the age of accountability that will disappear. They'll go, where do the kids go? All the kids probably below like 13 or so, below the age of accountability, will just disappear. There'll be a snatching away. And people will say, what, what, what was that? Most people say, oh, it's probably aliens. Or they'll, they'll say, oh, some kind of scientific experiment gone bad. No, no. When you, when you see that happen, if you're not right with God and you live to see that happen, guess what it was? It was the rapture of the church. It was God snatching away his chosen ones. So, <laughs> it's a good reason to get ready for the coming of the Lord and to get right with God, to make your peace with God. So question number three, as we continue, what's coming next? As you read the Bible, you think, what next? I mean, what am I supposed to do? I'm working on it. What is going on? And then what, what next? What's going to happen next? Well, here's some things to think about to help calm you down think about a new normal, things different, a, a few different scenarios may play out with this COVID-19. Things could improve and return to some kind of new normal because I don't think we're ever going to be the same from this. Some businesses will close and never reopen. Some people have died. So that, that is unchanging. I mean, that's, that is life changing. It's, you can't go back to the old way. And we're uh, putting new policies in place with our health code and our systems and, and even bailouts when it comes to business and all those things that the way we function with epidemics and disease will never be the same in our country. So we'll return to some kind of new normal probably. Um, and or, and this is one that people don't like, but things might get worse. I don't know. I don't know what's next. But what I do know is there's a God who loves me, who loves us, who's for us. And if we trust him, he can, he can walk us through every difficulty that we're, we're facing and even the, fa the difficulties we're facing right now. So what's coming next? Well, Jesus himself says this in Luke 21, verse 25 through 28. He says, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars on the earth, and nations will be in anguish. And perplexity at the, at the roaring and the tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken. And at that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Now that I've sufficiently freaked you out, right? Like we're already freaked out by COVID-19. And, and you're saying, like, Pastor, you're saying things could get worse? Yeah, they could get worse. But guess what? We go back to the hope. We go back to the comfort. Right? Psalm 91 is one of my favorite psalms. I decided to pull up here in the, in the message paraphrase translation. I just love how it reads. And this is a promise of God's protection. Psalm 91 says this. You who sit down... In the high God's presence, spend the night in Shaddai's shadow. Say this, you are my refuge. I trust in you and I'm safe. 
That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps, shields you from deadly hazards. His huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you're perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. Fear nothing. Not wild wolves in the night, not flying arrows in the day, not disease that prowls through the darkness, not disaster that erupts at high noon. Even though others succumb all around and drop like flies right and left, no harm will even graze you. You'll stand untouched. Watch it all from a distance. Watch the wicked turn into corpses. Yes, because God's your refuge, the high God, your very own home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through your door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. If you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. You'll walk unharmed among lions and snakes and kick young lions and serpents from the path. If you'll hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care if you'll only get to know and trust me. Call me and I'll answer. I'll be at your side in bad times. I'll rescue you. And then you throw a party. I'll give you a long life. And I'll give you a long drink of salvation. Isn't that a great promise? So times are fearful. He doesn't say that we won't see serpents and lions. He doesn't say that he'll get rid of the danger. He says he's going to be with us during the dangerous times. That the people are finally going to see the difference between the righteous and the unrighteous. They're going to see that God protects those that he loves. And that's true. We can take that to the bank. If you don't know God, if you've been living far from God, maybe it's time that you make your peace with him. Because Jesus is coming soon. And there will be a time when his spirit no longer strives with man. There will be a time when you'll want to repent, but... He, he's not offering His grace at that moment. There will be times when, when you would, should repent, but you don't have it in your heart or a desire to. Can I tell you, tell you, if you're hearing me right now, you're hearing the gospel right now, and you want to respond, you're feeling that tug in your heart like, I need to say yes to Jesus, right now is your moment. It's as simple as, 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 simple as saying, sorry, thank you, please. It's as simple as, as giving up the control of your life to God's care and control and letting Him take charge, letting Him take the wheel. Would you pray this prayer if you need to give your life to Jesus? Say, Dear Jesus, Jesus. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe God raised you from the dead. Please come into my heart. Please come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. And be my Lord. And be my Lord. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and if you meant it, you've begun a new relationship. You've signed over the deed of your life to heaven. You've been sentenced to heaven. You're going to heaven whether you like it or not. God has a plan for your life, and it's a good plan. It's a plan to bless you and not to harm you, a plan to give you a hope-filled future. Not only a future in heaven one day when you die, but a good future right here on earth. He's going to be with you through troubled times. You're going to have a hope and a joy that others don't have in the midst of all of this trouble if you'll just continue to walk with Jesus. So get right with God. Stay right with God. Get involved in a, in a local church. If you're here local in Castle Rock, you don't have a church family, please consider being a part of our online community, being a part of our real-life community. Hopefully, after these nine days are over, we'll be able to resume our normal in-person worship services. Uh, maybe you could be a part of the bread ministry and bread distribution. We're looking at relaunching youth ministry and doing a lot of the youth and kids outreach. We're trying to, to get uh, meals into the hands of kids that are struggling with, with uh, nutrition insecurity and, and family that have lost their jobs and they need meals. We want to help provide food for those families. We're talking about doing Hispanic to Spanish speaking outreach uh, on the south side of town. And, and you could be a part of a lot of different ministry. 
So the global pandemic requires a lot of our, our support, especially today, to just to ex- exclusively support us online. So you can go to mysummitchurch.com and do that. If you have these envelopes at home, some of you have these little envelopes, you can do it that way. We're giving away these little Grata Woods. We have a man in our church, Mr. Tim DeYoung. Hey, Tim, Woo-hoo. if you're there, we love you, man. He makes these. They're a little notched wood with five grooves in it. And the challenge is to think of five things every day that you're grateful for. If you'd like to get one of these Grata Woods, we'll mail you that with a couple of these uh, envelopes, and you just ma- just mail a self-addressed uh, a- st- am- a- envelope, and we'll send you some envelopes and a Grata Wood to Summit Church of Castle Rock, 200 South Wilcox Street, number 243, Castle Rock, Colorado, 80104, and we'll get that into your hands. Um, as I said, you can give it on our church website, mysummitchurch.com. You can give by text. So if you just open your text app, you know that little green app with the, the, the speech bubble on it? Open that app up and text to this number, 303-625-9434. That's 303-625-9434. And in the message box, just put in the amount that you'd like to give. Follow the prompts. And 100% of what you give by text goes directly to the ministry with no bank fees, without any carrier fees on your on your cell phone. And it's a great way to help the ministry all at the same time. You can help you can help us by supporting us by following us uh, or liking our, our Facebook page, Summit Church of Castle Rock. Or friend me up on, on Facebook. I'm Wayne C. Hansen. Or follow me on Twitter, Pastor Wayne H., and then later this message with the multiple camera angles and all the fancy uh, production will be on YouTube later this week. And my YouTube handle is just Wayne Hanson, H-A-N-S-O-N. And uh, as I said, go to our webpage and uh, give us your phone number so we can get you a part of a group text so you know what's happening in the ministry locally. Our Alpha course has been sort of on pause because we've been meeting uh, in a local restaurant. And most of you know, we can't sit down at restaurants anymore. It's all drive throughs and pickups. So uh, we are moving the Alpha course for the remainder of the semester to Zoom meetings. So if you'd like to just even finish out, we're going to do the weekend away virtually. So if you send me your email, I'll invite you to a Zoom call where we'll watch the the Alpha video together and then we'll have an online discussion and prayer, do all the things that we do with Alpha course, and then Bible study. We've, We've done Tuesday night Bible studies. We'll probably do some Bible studies through Zoom as well so we can discuss the Bible and ask questions get prayer and prayer needs uh, back and forth and that'll be free. Zoom is free and we can have up to 100 people on a call at once and it can go for up to an hour at a time. So I'd love to have your involvement uh, with online ministry as well. Just send us your email address if you'd like to be a part of the online um, community with Alpha Course and the Zoom and and, uh, other ways to stay involved. Um, With that... I think I'm going to pray a blessing and let you all go. Man, we've had a steady 10 to 20 people on the feed live here the entire time. So I'm glad that that's going to happen. I know it'll be hundreds of people later um, as we post this online. But thank you for joining me today. Thank you for joining me, Lily. Of course. (laughs) God bless you guys. He's so good to us. And now, just as the Lord commanded us to, to bless one another, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, lift your countenance, and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week. We'll see you online. Take care. Love you. Bye-bye.